Glory to God. Welcome to week 10 of the Prodigal Son podcast in him study of scriptures. Now these are there there is 150 over 150 scriptures on this list that I want to encourage you to download and study these these scriptures with us. This is week 10 of us taking one scripture a day five days a week, and finding out who we are in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I'm telling you, it will set you free from the shame and the condemnation that religion and and the world wants to throw at you all every time that that you that you get in a place that you you think you're you're doing good, you're going strong, and, and if you and if you're paying attention to to what religion and the world says, they'll throw something at you that 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 it just it crushes you in in your Christian life and makes you feel like that you know I got to go all the way back to the beginning and start over, and that's what these scriptures are for. To show you who you are so you don't have to go through that vicious cycle every time every time something bad happens in your life. Every time you stump your toe and make a mistake. Every time that, you know, you you find yourself in a position that that you think, you know, I put myself here. Well maybe you did. Now maybe you did. But the fact of the matter is, these scriptures were given to us by our Heavenly Father to strengthen us so that we can find out who we are and see past those situations and say, no, I'm not stepping off into that situation again. I'm I'm going to believe who I am. I'm going to stand in who I am and know that my God's going to handle it. That's what this study's about. This is, like I said, week 10. We've got over 20 weeks to go. And it just gets richer and richer, stronger and stronger by by showing us what God's Word has said about us, to us, and for us. God didn't mean for us to, to go out here and get born again and then struggle the rest of our days. You know God can't use you if you're in a constant struggle with who you are, with your salvation, with, with your well-being. No, He can't use you because you're too focused on, on, on your shortcomings or, or your need. But when you come to know and understand what He said in His Word and stand in it, It'll change your life. Now, I want to say this. Share these podcasts on your social media. Give them away so others can be set free. I want to say one more thing before we get started. Partners, thank you for all that you're doing, sowing into this ministry, helping make this possible, helping us do what God has commissioned this ministry to do, and that is to give His Word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Remember, share these podcasts so others can find out who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Now, I do these prayers every time I do this podcast for a reason. I do these prayers so that the world can know and understand what I am desiring for them, that that I desire that they have their spiritual eyes open to God's love and His mercy, His grace, and His goodness. And, and at, this thrills me to be able to pray this for every living person that walks the face of this earth because I know what, what that realization and what that revelation has done in my life. Paul said in Ephesians 1.15, it says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called. His hope holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. 
I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him head over over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God for that revelation in my life. That revelation is new every day in my life, and I pray that you come to understand just how much God loves you. Glory to God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, God, that you would have me to be. Lord, use me today to glorify you, to 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 give these people that listen to this podcast hope, not in religion, not in me, but in you. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all you're doing, all you have done and all you're going to do in Jesus Holy name I pray. Amen. You know, today we're going to be looking at a at a very familiar scripture. Uh, probably the most quoted scripture that I've ever heard. I mean, worldwide, John 3, 16 is probably the most qu- quoted scripture that you've ever heard. But I'm going to start out in 15. John 3, 15, and it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Eternal life for those who believe. Believe what? Believe in him. Believe in Him and stand on what He has written down for you to stand on. You know, I, I've, I've lived a lot of years on this earth not knowing, not understanding that I could count on God's Word regardless of how I felt. I, I, I ran on my feelings. If, if, I, I, if I was feeling good about where I was at, I, you know, I was all right. But but I'm telling you, those days were few and far between because I felt like that if I didn't feel like I was I was working hard enough, then I was just I, I you know, I, I was off, you know, off and and struggling because of that. I spent my entire adult life feeling that way. Feeling that that I just wasn't good enough, I wasn't exactly where I needed to be, and I didn't know how to get there. But what does this say? And you know, this is something I've struggled. I struggled with up until five years ago, six years ago now. And and I don't want the world. To, I don't want you or anybody else in this world to struggle one day with what I struggled with. That's the reason I do this podcast, so people can know and stand in and understand what God is saying to them, 
What did the 15th verse say? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Get that down into, into your heart. And let it, let it permeate your heart and come to a place in your life that you're determined that you're going to believe that above any opinion. See, I didn't know that. I didn't understand that. I, I felt like it, that, you know, I went to church, and if I didn't go to church one Sunday, if something happened and I couldn't get there, you know, I felt guilty and ashamed and condemned because I didn't make it. When really, that church service was there to feed me and strengthen me, not to, not to condemn me if I, didn't, if, I, if I had something come up and couldn't make it. But I, that's, that's the way I operated. And, and, and this, but this, this verse right here says, whosoever believeth in him should have everlasting life. That, that should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it felt like I was perishing every day of my living, the, every day that I lived for the biggest part of my adult life because I just couldn't get to where I thought I needed to be. And honey, that's not salvation. That's religion. That's running on your own steam. That's running on your own righteousness and your own goodness. And that ain't what God wants for us. That's the reason we're doing this in Him scripture study is, is so that others can find out who they are in Him, in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, and stand in that and operate in that and walk in that, walk in those truths, walk in what God has said about you, not what, not what the world has said, not what your, not what your, uh, your past has said. Not what religion has said, and surely to goodness, what you, what, not what you say when you mess up. What the devil will put in your mind, oh, you're, you, don't you remember what happened? Don't you understand what happened? No, I, what I want you to understand is that whosoever, whosoever shall, shall believe in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what I want you to stand on. It has nothing, your salvation has nothing to do with your goodness. It has nothing to do with your goodness. It has all the, all, everything stems from what he done and, and your faith in him and what his sacrifice and what he went, went to the cross to give you an opportunity to have. I lived till I was in my mid 40s struggling struggling with just just craziness religious craziness not knowing that I could stand on what these these verses say and now now listen to me now listen to me when I got born again in my early 20s I struggled a long time but I was diligent in studying. So, so I'm not telling you that I hadn't read every one of these scriptures multiple times in my life. But I hadn't determined in my heart the difference that, that, that makes today in the last six years of my life, the difference that, that I am today and what I was back then. Today, I have determined that God's word is true above all opinion. And I'm not going to take anything other than thus saith the word of God, because that is true about me. Why? Because I'm his child. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I have come to the conclusion that His Word is true above my opinion and everyone else's opinion. No matter what I see, where I stand, or the circumstances that I might find myself in, I'm going to believe God above everything, above everything. And, and I'm going to believe what He says and, and let that get down into my heart and give that good ground for it to for it to uh to work in. I heard a man pre preach a message this morning that was just outstanding. 
and and he preached on the fourth chapter of Mark and talking about the ground that you that you that that your heart is, and if you'll open up your heart and and work it and and let that that let that truth get into you. See, I didn't understand that. I lived my entire adult life up until I was in my mid forties, and and didn't let what I knew in my head get down into my heart because my heart was hardened with doubt and fear and unbelief. I had been taught that if you don't if you don't uh, do certain things and get certain things uh, straight in your life, that that you that you, that you'll never be where you're supposed to be. And that was just, that was just, that was wrong. I mean, that's the only thing I, I know to say it. It was wrong. You know why I found, found out it was wrong? Is because when I, when I read Luke 15, 11 through 24, that young man, all he done was came back and repented for what he done. He was prepared to be a servant for the rest of his days. He was prepared to be a servant in his father's house for the rest of his days. But all his father wanted was him to come home and repent. He came home and said, Father, forgive me. I have sinned against you and against heaven and am no more worthy to be called thy son. And now in the hog pen, he had said, I want to be a hired servant. And he went through this whole spill. But when he got home and repented, his father cut him off right there. Before he started talking about what he would, what he was willing to do, because it had nothing to do, it had nothing to do with with him uh, uh, paying for his sins. No, his fa- all his father wanted him to do was confess them, just repent of them, and he was going to restore him, and he did. And I lived for a lot of years not knowing that. There's not a doubt in my mind. If I'd known what I know today, I would have never backslid. And now, don't don't say that I wouldn't have made mistakes and 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 got out of the will of God because we all do at times. But I'd have never took a ten year stint the way I did away from God because I thought God was mad at me. I thought He was some tyrant, and He's not a tyrant. He's that loving Father in Luke fifteen that has given us eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all we have to do is confess Him as Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead and we are saved. And we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that that eternal life is for those who believe. You understand that eternal life, that love and that mercy that that father in Luke 15 had was extended to me. And I didn't know that. I did not know that. But it thrills me today to be be able to proclaim to you that it is it is well It is well in the Father's house. The Father is standing with open arms, with His arms wide open, waiting waiting on Him, or waiting on you to come to Him. Whether you're uh, born again and just away from Him, or whether you have never been born again at all, He's standing with open arms, waiting on you to come to Him. Now, Romans 10 and 9 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. I I thought that uh, I knew that as a young man. I knew all you had to do was give your heart and life to Christ and believe on him and 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 you were saved but i thought that my performance stemmed on me being in his good graces when the grace of god is god's unmerited favor god you're in god's gra- god's grace you stand and operate in god's grace every day of your life and he's more than willing to accept you into your into his family if you're not born again and and he has that grace uh, 
standing with the door wide open every day of your life. All you have to do is confess Jesus as Lord of your life. If you believe God is who he says he is, and Jesus came and died on the cross for your sins and was raised for your justification, that God raised him from the dead on the third day, all you have to do is confess Jesus as Lord of your life. Ask him to forgive you, and he's going to come into your heart and into your life and change you save you and bear you into his family. That's all you have to do. And then you can get these scriptures and find out who he has said that you are in him, in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and and live in victory and be triumphant in who you are in him. That's all it takes. That's all it takes to be born again. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? Said, whosoever shall believe on him shall be saved. Do that today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to go to our website. It's the dash prodigalson.com. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. If you if you've got a a need in your life, I want to agree with you according to God's word about that need and stand with you in prayer on that need. I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can stand on. Glory to God. I thank God for people that put their trust in what God's word says. That's what it's got. That's what's going to bring us through God's word. Glory to God. Now, hey, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you for all that you do, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, giving us uh, walking orders and that to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. Oh, I thank God for partners, faithful partners that sow into this ministry, helping us do just that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, hey, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. And don't forget, Share this podcast on your social media. Share our website on your social media so others can find the Word of God, can find the truth for their life. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.